So while I'm in Cedar City, I'm taking care of uh, Ryan's dog, meet Loki, doing little dog sitting. And so we're going to take a trip to Walmart. Isn't that right, Loki? We're going to go to Walmart, your favorite place to go. Oh yeah. So I'm currently hanging out at my buddy's apartment in Cedar City, Utah. And for those that don't know, it's in the southwest corner of Utah. And right now he's in Moab actually doing a, a job. But um, I had a request about outlining what my electrical setup was. So I'm going to talk about um, how I set up two auxiliary batteries that get charged from my main battery and from there how it hooks into my inverter and also how I have attached two DC 12 volt DC female plugs so they're just like the uh, cigarette lighter plug that is in most vehicles and then out to a couple different appliances which are my thermoelectric refrigerator it's a Vector brand, and then also my Max Burton digital stove to go. And then how I charge up all of my peripheral devices, such as my, my laptop and my cell phone, power bricks, basically all of the USB devices that I own. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, right here is my Isopro 140. It's by Keyline Chargers. And what it is is a smart battery isolator. And essentially there's a uh, LED on that shows that um, um, it cuts in at 13.3 volts DC. And then the LED will cut off, like the light will go off when it's cut out at 12.8. And that's to preserve the power of the uh, your starter battery so you can still start. But once it cuts in at 13.3, then it charges your uh, auxiliary batteries. The beauty of it is that it's um, simple and it's also one way. So it goes from the battery to the isolator and directly into your auxiliary batteries. You don't have to uh, fiddle around with the alternator. Uh, so it's um, simple to install, simple to troubleshoot. I actually have the wire running underneath this door seal and then it exits out here. And then I have my um, batteries behind the seat. So I've pushed the uh, seat forward. And you can see I have these two battery boxes. They're connected to each other via parallel. Not serial, parallel. And then I have positive and negative wires going out into the canopy section or the truck bed. I have both a uh, 12 volt DC female plug and then I also have a wire a couple wires that are going to a 2000 watt inverter so the wires from the auxiliary battery there's a positive and negative that go into my full ball 2000 watt solar power inverter and um, yeah it's a simple you know positive and negative that connects to it on the back of it, I have two 120 volt AC. So what it does is it inverts DC to AC. It also has this USB connector as well. So you can charge up devices directly. And this is the cheapest 2000 watt inverter that I could find. I think it was $38 on Amazon at the time. And what I do is I run a four plug extension. And so I increase it from 2 to 5, 5 inputs. You'll notice I also have a direct DC plug in here as well. And this connects directly with um, some ring terminals directly into the battery. And from here, I run my uh, thermoelectric um, cooler. So right now I have it set for... Uh, actually, I was going to set it to 35, and I think the ambient temperature is actually around 35, so it's probably the reason why it's not running right now. 
Now I eventually want to get a compressor refrigerator because they're more efficient than thermoelectric. But this one, for its size, is pretty efficient. It's a 3 amp draw. It has handles, it has a 12 volt outlet, it has uh, a wheel at the bottom. And you can also plug it into um, an AC as well. It has a direct AC input. And this is about 20 liters. I don't think they actually make this anymore. I think it was bought out by, um, I think it's DeWalt, DeWalt. DeWalt bought out Vector. And so they'll probably come out with their own line of um, thermoelectric coolers. But um, this has been really good. I can run this off of my two auxiliary batteries. And it's probably the, <clears throat> the appliance that draws the most and draws the most amps, which is about three amps per hour. My two batteries are 88 amp hours, and so both of them together is what, 176, something like that, all together. I can run this then if you do the math. If I ran it 24 hours a day, um, let's see here, three times 24, that's like 676, three times seven, so I could run it, you know, around like three days if I ran it continuously. But I only run it during the day, so about eight hours during the day. And that's uh, 24 amps per day. Mm, let's see, 24 into 176. I mean, I can run it for about six days if I only run it during the day when it's hottest. Eventually, I'd like to get a compressor and... A compressor cooler and I would probably be able to run it twice as long at least. So this has been good. So as I showed you I have a DC outlet in the canopy but then I also have another one that I run off of the second auxiliary battery in my cab and I usually use this with the um, Max Burton digital stove to go which I also believe runs at um, 3 amps per hour. So, I usually, if I'm running both, I'm usually driving. And that way I don't uh, drain the battery too severely. And since, um, I, for the distances I travel, it can be anywhere from 2 to 4 hours. And it typically takes me only an hour or two to cook a meal, depending on what I'm cooking. So it's nice to have the, one of these in the front and one of these in the back. And this is the other major appliance that I use in my truck. It's the Max Burton Digital Stove to Go. And I believe it also runs off of about uh, 3 amps per hour. So it's low draw. It has a non-stick surface, easy to clean. It's cool because you don't always want to um, run propane, like a propane stove, where you have to be outside. I've been in many conditions where it's too windy or just too plain cold, or I'm driving from place to place, and you just can't cook something while you're driving, but with this you can. I set it in my co-pilot chair next to me, and um, throw in whatever I want. Typically it's like beef and a soup and to create a stew. Turn it on and an hour later I have a hot meal to eat at my destination. So I really like this because unlike some other appliances, this can work as an oven, this can work as a heater, a reheater. Um, you can even saute a little bit with it. And it's built for 12 volt DC. So if you get a chance, I recommend these guys. <laughs>